We haven't done one of these in like four years. Pretty much, because you quit your job. Dozens of people have been asking for this. You quit your job and stopped answering my calls. It's another episode of The Hearty Soup, starring someone famous and Drew Campbell. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. Hunter wanted to stop by and talk about big news. Go. What is it? We're headed to Can- or We were just in Canada. Oh, I thought you were going to identify as a different sex or something. Oh, uh, no. The results are still good. We don't have to do that yet. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, what's going on with your offseason? Dude, we're just hanging out. You know, we were at uh, Action Off-Road Camp first first week in July we were there. Uh, no, sorry. Second week of July we were there. Then we were down in Florida for a week. Then we were in the Keys for a week lobstering. And, yeah, we were in Canada last weekend. That was super cool. Never been there. Uh, race was sweet. Uh, crowd was even cooler. You know, they didn't speak in English, so that was that was a rough one. What race did you do up there? Uh, it was called an FM, FMSQ. And it's a hair scramble. Yeah, it's a hair scramble. It's like the GNCCs of Canada. Two-hour race, pro class. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, they had a, they had a super solid turnout. You know, um, the, the track was sandy. It was like a wet Florida is what it reminded me of. So it was different. Yeah. How'd yeah. you do? I won. Who was there? Um, Gabby Nod, who is the Canadian champion. He races XC2 in America. He do okay? Was Gab- he second? Gab broke. He was second oh, okay. before he broke. Yeah, yeah. Yep. What did you think of the terrain up there? It was sandy, super sandy, followed up by some deep clay, and it was good. I mean, it was fun, you know. I definitely, I'd like to go back. Uh, it was only a four and a half hour drive, which was nice, yeah. easy, you know. Felt like driving here. How was how the actual event, like, orchestrated? Like, Oh, smooth. Very similar to us. Check-in registration was easy to find. Yeah, it was super smooth. They give you a good podium interview. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we like I, I was telling somebody, we sprayed champagne before the interview, which was funky. But other than that, we were... We Is were that good. like a tradition up there? I don't know. No, the one guy that usually races that series, he goes, no, 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 you were supposed to spray the champagne after. And I was like, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what we do in the States. <laughs> yeah. And no, I don't know. But no, they were good. They were super inviting, you know, super nice people. And yeah, it was good. I, I had fun. Plans to do more. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely going to be... I think that they have one more that doesn't overlap this year that's in October. Love to go up and do that. It's close. I think that one is in Quebec as well. So they said it's, only, yeah. it's even closer to Quebec than this one was. Do you have any issues getting your uh, van with quad inside across the line? Not a problem at all. I drove literally straight through. I only gave my passport. I had the MSO for the bike, and they didn't even they didn't care. They just wanted to see my passport. Yeah, we had a 4x4 guy race with us at round one who is French. He was there. Yeah, and he... he encouraged me to come up and try a couple of races but that makes me nervous going across the line with my quad no not at all i mean the van definitely like you can't tell it's in a van right but so. i'm in a truck so yeah that's true they said that you can't bring a dirty bike in though they said dirty bikes into the country is a big no-no you have to wash it before you come in i wonder why the dirt down here is contagious <laughs> that's the reason that's what yeah that's what they say they said that they can't have dirty dirt wow Interesting. Got to keep Canada pure. Crazy Canadians. Uh, okay, so the plan is to do some more. When, when are the next few races up there? Oh, I don't know. This one I only planned on like three days. Ah, I looked at the schedule. I was like, oh, they're racing this weekend. I'm going to go. I've got it free. I'll be there. <laughs> uh, but you would go again. Yeah, absolutely. Loose loose program I'm running. You know, It's a super loose program. Yeah. Well, one of the uh, favorite series that you and I enjoy is coming up in a few months, the New York Fall Series. Dude, I mean, I was at Area 51. I don't know where you were, but I was there. No, I was not there. Uh, the track was sick. You missed out. I think I was at Unadilla that weekend, watching the Pro Motocross. We raced on Sunday. You could have been there. I could have, but I was very hungover. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Uh, so, before we get to the fall series, you've got to finish up your GNCC se- season. I do, yes. And currently running in... Second, yes. Yeah, we got three more rounds. Uh, super strong rounds for me. Excited that... The, that we're headed into Mason, no, not Mason Dixon. We've already been there. The Mountaineer. That one is always a good one for me. We've got to grab a win there, and always strong. Place is super rocky. Good there. The next one's CJ's Raceway, which is in West Virginia, and you know that one's good. And Ironman's good. So we've won it two of the last three. Yep. So headed into headed into some strong territory for us. And yeah, I'm excited. You know, excited to get that done. Get back to Florida and take take a couple weeks off and just enjoy the things that are Florida that I don't always get to do when we're there there in the winter and yeah that'll be then you'll come back up to battle the fall series. Oh, that's right. That is the fall series time. Mm. Yeah. So, so I, you're going to be in Florida for the start of the fall series? I don't know. I, well, Ironman actually overlaps the start of that series. Well, then I I can't win that title. So I mean, well, yeah. I'm going to have to do some FTRs then, dude. Yeah. Uh, well, at least come up and try to do like Hogback or something. That one's the 
Probably the best track. That place has put me on the ground more times than any of the other fall series. Why? Because the moto track? I have no idea. No, no. The woods are what get me every time. I think the woods are great at that track. Oh, I know. I remember the year it rained there. I got cross rutted, knocked myself silly. I literally clipped a tree. I hit so hard that I ended up snapping. I forget what I snapped, but I couldn't turn left or right. <laughs> For all my viewers, uh, even the best in the world hit trees. So just you heard it first. Smoke it. I don't. I yeah. don't hit them. Casually. Oh yeah, you take the thing right out. Break your quad too in the process. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. If I'm gonna hit it, I, I hit it hard. Well, you've got uh, three remaining rounds. Is there any chance that you're eligible for the title this year for GNCC XC1 Pro? I mean, mathematically, yes. Anything's possible. Anything and everything is always possible. You know, you, we saw that in Supercross. You know, you can't you nope. can't count a chicken until it hatches. Nope. And, you know, but no, I mean, at this point, there's no pressure. You know, it's, it's easy. You know, it's easy. It's easy math. You just have to win. You know, it's super simple that way. And no, I mean, it's it makes it much easier on myself. Um, it is one of those things that, you know, you think about, but it's not, you know, at this point, we're building, we're building for 2024. At this point, you know, we've, we've kind of switched, switched gears to where we're now learning. I mean, we're learning every weekend, but at this point, the main goal is to finish this year strong and be able to take the knowledge into 24 and hit it strong there. Great. Well, we saw a change from last year to this year that I'd like to ask you about. Uh, you used to run some different colors because you didn't fly the blue crew flag, but it looks like you got that logo on your graphics this year and you're only running blue and white. I do, yeah. Yep. Um, Yamaha stepped up to the plate this year. You know, they got me an awesome awesome parts budget and stuff like that to, uh, to start the year on. So we've been there, and that's uh, that looks to be continuing next year. So we're going to be, uh, be Blue Crew next year as well. Can you talk in depth about that? Are there any trick parts like a dirt bike no. racer would get? Mm -mm. You're pretty much just getting uh, whatever you need to keep the four-wheeler going. Correct, yeah. All my stuff is still an OEM part number. Um, we do have some cool stuff, though, that is, you know, like, there are some, some different parts that aren't always available. Like, you can buy anything that we have, but it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things you have to know what you're asking for before you can get it, you yep. know? And, you know, but no, I mean, the ATV side, you know, much like even on a, even on a, on a works uh, motorcycle, you can still get those parts. You just have to break out the checkbook. Sure. Uh, so how many Blue Crew XC1 Pros do we have this season? I mean, technically... Everybody, if they're, so to be part of Blue Crew, you have to sign up for it. You get a gift card for some free apparel, I believe, and then you're eligible for the championship bonus at the end of this year. So anybody who runs the Yamaha logo and the Yamaha crest on the front of the plastics is eligible for uh, Blue Crew. You also have to have the Blue Crew logo on your machine and on your jersey to be eligible. Gotcha. So uh, you're saying an amateur racer could do this? Technically, yes. Yeah, anybody can be part of Blue Crew. Uh, on the amateur level, they actually give away a brand new YFZ every year. Oh wow! The amateurs, yeah, the top amateur on the Blue no, Crew. No, not even. They um, they just choose it at random. Huh? Yep. So anybody who signed up for Blue Crew during the year at random could win a brand new YFZ 450. That's great. I'm glad to see at least Yamaha is giving back. I've had many uh, discussions with co-hosts on the show I'm doing this year, Between the Trees, talking about manufacturers just lacking coming out with new machines, and Yamaha is the only one really doing a sport quad. Yep, yeah, they are the, the only manufacturer that is still supporting the sport, um, which is super sweet of them. You know, it, it makes it easy, too, that they don't have many new changes because you don't have to reinvent the wheel every year with parts. You right. don't have to have new A-arm setups, new casters new suspension points, you know, you, you uh, cut the amount of workload down because you just kind of can copy and paste, and that's what's nice about it as well. And the other nice thing, too, is that it, it brings the price down on, you know, your, your used parts, your aftermarket parts, like a lot of that stuff, because they don't have to have the R&D into it for another model year. It makes everything much more price, price point and uh, much more consumer friendly. Now, that quad's relatively unchanged for... How long now? Past few years? So the YFC 450 hasn't changed, hasn't had major changes since 20, 2012 to 2013. They actually, if you look at it, 2012, the plastics are different. Or it's, excuse me, from 2012 to 2014, I forget what year in there they changed the uh, plastic design. That was actually to help a taller riders out on the front fenders because we would actually hit our knees on the front. On well, the you front look range. giant on the thing. You look like you and John Galata <laughs> yeah. Jr. are just huge on those things. Yep. So John, myself, and Chad kind of have would have the same issue where our knees would actually hit the front of the fenders on the older models, and they ended up opening up the rider cockpit a little bit to give us a more comfortable feel. They also, in 2010, they changed the clutch baskets as well when they went to their slipper clutch design, whereas I still run the, the conventional clutch, which helps with 
you know, a lot of free play and, and stuff like that, you know, not having I not having just one point of contact, we I have eight, I believe it's eight bolts inside instead of just uh, three or the one on the slipper. Gotcha. Uh, do you think that you'll have a chance to give your insight input if they ever upgrade and tweak the model? Oh, you know, I mean... Will, they, will Yamaha come to you and be like, you know, we know you guys are... Or you, you mentioned Chad or Hendrick earlier. Uh, would they have any input? You know, I mean, those guys, they, they work very close with the factory as is. I mean, they, there's no uh, there's no need to, to tweak something that's not broken. You know what I mean? Right. At this point, until until somebody else shows up and gives them some, some pressure, there's no need for them to, you know, really really look for a problem that they don't have. You, and know? you have both uh, setups. I've seen you on a motocross track with a wide setup. I've seen you on many hair scramble tracks with a narrow setup. Uh, you feel that the bike is good, doesn't need any refinements. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I... Um, you, I, I always feel that you could get something to turn tighter, and I don't know if that's just, just the way I am. You know, like, I always want the bikes to turn a little sharper, do this, do that. But, I mean, overall, you know, the bikes are the bikes are phenomenal. You know, compared to other, other brands that I've ridden, you know, it's it's great. You know, yeah. there's not much that I would change that you can't change in the rider. And that's the other thing, too, is that a lot of people, they want to they wanna reinvent the wheel when they really have to just look at the, the operator of the wheel. Yeah. Uh, do you have any inside scoop if they're coming out with a Sport 4x4 Yamaha? A sport four by four. Yeah, for all the old guys that need a couch to ride. Interesting. I've I've never I've never heard it phrased like that. And uh, no, they they just released. That's what the industry models. calls it. Really, I've yeah. never heard it said that. In the industry, you only have uh, two sport four by four manufacturers: Polaris and Can Am. They offer the Sportsman S, the Scrambler S. Scrambler. Excuse me. Scrambler, Scrambler is the Polaris one. Nobody races it because it breaks. Uh, and then we're all on Can Ams because. It's been tested and proven in the 4 by 4 racing world, and nobody else is coming out with a competition for it. Polaris might be back in the game. How so? They just like to go fast. Polaris, think outside. Are you getting uh, some sponsorship dollars right now? <laughs> Do they give you like a side-by-side -side or something to drive around the pits? Just buy your parts from Ithacorec. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There it is. There's where tied in the shameless plug. Uh, we do too sell Can Am as well. We just got the new Mud Pro editions in as well, and we also have some Renegades on the floor. I'd love to sell you one today. And where is Ithaca Rec located? Why it'd be on Route 13 in Newfield, New York. Wow, just shameless south plug. of just south of Ithaca. If a customer were to randomly walk in, would they see Hunter Hart behind the counter? Ironically, I've been there a lot. You know, yeah. uh, Fridays. I've been there a lot on Fridays. Yep, I actually I sold three jet skis last week. Wow. Yep. How is the uh, watercraft market? Phenomenal. Because I think best uh, market to be in. I think New York is suffering with our snowmobile market. We haven't just haven't had snow. We currently don't carry any snowmobile brands anymore. Yeah. We we are ATV, uh, side by side watercraft and dirt bikes. What's the nearest launch to the dealership? You guys only have you have like a mile or two to go before you hit water. Oh yeah, yeah. We can we're we can launch from Tremond um, to Gannick. We can also go to Little Lake, we can go to Seneca Lake, and we can go to Cuca Lake. All within, we can be to four different lakes in about 35 minutes. Wow. Well, yep. Yours, a, yours, truly correct. Gets, yours truly gets to deliver them, so, you know. Well, call it the correct to order your new your new unit, and maybe right. uh, you'll have an XC1 Pro deliver. That's right. c just dropped their new 325 horsepower uh, watercrafts as well. We actually had a guy call me and order two of those today, so those are going quick. Nice. Yep. Well, shameless plug for your shop. I want to hear some shameless plugs about your sponsors because you and I have chatted off camera uh, about your main apparel sponsor, and Fly Racing really wanted you back this year. Uh, did you sign a multi-deal deal year year deal? No, I uh, I did not. I'd like to. You know, Fly Fly has been awesome to me. They they really stepped up about two years ago. Um, got me an amazing deal. Uh, they actually just dropped their twenty four gear. And no, those guys, those guys have really, really been stepping up recently. I actually just placed my 2024 gear order yesterday. So, so you're staying with them? Stay tuned. No, nope. That's just oh, you're the, running the 24 gear for the rest yep, of GCC. That's just to finish the year out. Yep. yep. Uh, I do plan to stay with Fly for 2024. I don't see much change in there. You know, those guys, they treat me well, especially with their new safety helmet. I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of the reviews on that, but essentially, for for anybody that doesn't know, Fly just dropped a helmet that that essentially has OnStar for your helmet. Wow, you know it's uh, it's honestly game changer. You know, if if you do a lot of riding by yourself, just have your phone on you, and the helmet actually has Bluetooth in the helmet, 
that if you crash or it detects an incident, it'll actually call your emergency contact. It'll also rate the severity of your crash and let you know when you get back to the house, you know, your max speed, your travel distance, you know, everything wow. like that comes out of the helmet. It's, a, it's got a mobile app, so you download the app. You can watch it, you know, on your phone afterwards, and it, it tells you everything. I mean, this, uh, this helmet, you know, it's, it's priced at $7.99, and, you know, I mean, it's 100 bucks more than their, their standard formula helmet. It comes with the same Rion technology in their helmet. And I mean, they they really crushed it. You know, I think that this helmet here, it's it's still not the most expensive helmet on the market, which is nice, you know. And it's uh, it's a heck of a helmet. You know, I'm uh, I actually ordered two of them. I'm excited to get my hands on them. You know, test them, see them, feel them, and just just have that uh, that principle of safety. You know, I, I do a lot of riding by myself. You know, at the house or down in Florida. You know, especially like that's where kind of. It's one of those big things where I do a lot of riding by myself, and um, my bicycle stuff has all incident detection and stuff like that as well. And, you know, just the kind of the peace of mind as well, you know, like you're, you, you don't have any, any real safety issues because then, like, you, and it pinpoints your exact location sure. down to the GPS coordinate. Like, I think it gives it within, like, a 30-foot radius, I, I believe is what wow. it puts it to, you know. That's so, I mean, amazing technology. I, I didn't know uh, helmet manufacturers were doing that. Yeah. Well, fly. Fly is doing it. Fly is. Innovative. Yes, Fly is. Leading the way. They're, Great. They're proud uh, with their formula helmet. And to the app, the nice thing is that as they update the quality of the helmet, just like any software, it's going to upgrade and go with that as well. There's a ton of new features about it. They actually, if you go on a Fly's website, click on the helmet, they have a whole website page dedicated just to the helmet. And $7.99 isn't a bad price point. No, not at all. Nope. And it comes with, uh, it's got four or five different colorways. You know, they've got their standard black, they've got a blue and white, and then they've got a red, and then they've got, I believe it's a lime green yellow option that they have. And yeah, I mean, it's it's a heck of a gear line. They did um, add the bow back onto their gear as well. The They used to just have the bow on the front like a ski boot. Yep. They've actually added the zipper and the cross pad back into the front as well, put the bow back on the back for their light hydrogen gear for 24. Awesome. And you think these will be in by the time we start back up for GNCC? Yes. So all fly dealers are allowed to order. They should have been allowed. Any Western Power Sports dealers should have placed their gear orders, and it should be arriving at dealerships soon. I mean, I'm talking, you know, gear is available. <laughs> Bella wants to sit with you. Gear should be available in, I believe it's 9-1, it all comes available. Yep. So that'll be, you know, anything you want, you know, Fly's going to have, check it out on their website. You currently can't order any of it off the website just because it uh, has to become available first to the dealers. And then, you know, you guys will be free to order it, you know, 9-1 and yeah. But well, we'll be, see you wearing them. Yes, yep. yes, absolutely. I will have, I'm hoping to have my stuff next week. And you're still with Scott Goggles? Yes. Yep. And uh, how long have you been with them? Man, I've I've been with Scott as long as I could wear a pair of goggles. You so know, I've I've never left. A um, while. Yeah, I've uh, I've worn Scott goggles since two thousand and eight. You know, and yeah, I I actually didn't get a deal. I I bought my goggles, man, since till about twenty twenty sixteen was when I first got my first pair of free goggles from those guys. So I mean, I bought goggles for eight years. Yeah. Well, I didn't buy them, but my mom and dad. Mom did. and dad helped you. And uh, yeah, and then one day I actually met one of the the higher ups at Scott Primo, who's the general manager of Scott, and. You know, we started out with, you know, two, three free pairs and just kind of testing the waters. And then from there on out, you know, it's kind of whatever I need, you know, Scott hooks me up with and uh, super proud to be part of the Scott bicycling family as well. On that side as well, those guys hooked me up with a great, great deal on bicycles. You do a lot of training on the bike, don't you? I do. I love, love my bicycle. And uh, yeah, those guys do an awesome job just kind of just crossing the market a lot. And, and that's the biggest thing too, is, is a lot of these people get wrapped up in the sponsorship stuff of like, man, like. I just need all of this from one person, but you don't, you know, like spread it out. You know, I mean, it's, I'd much rather like, say, say your goal drew was to get, you know, say you wanted a thousand dollars, like from, from all the companies that support you. It'd be hard if you went to like one company and you're like, Hey, I, I want a thousand dollar check. But if you went to, you know, five companies and you're like, Hey man, can I get 200 bucks in, in, you know, salary contingency, whatever you want to call it for race support this year, and this is what it will give you in return, it's a lot easier nut for a lot of people to crack to say a $200 sponsorship than it is to say write you a check for 1000 bucks. you know, yeah. and, and that's the biggest thing too is is value product at what you want, and, and all pros started out, you know, where they were getting 10, 20% off, and it's just about, you have to build the relationship, and you have to just put the time in, you know, yeah. I mean, like my Scott deal took, you know, man, eight years, you know, technically it was building for eight years, and, uh, and yeah, that's a, that's one that I worked on for a while. My, my Maxis deal, you know, I mean, I, I was a Maxis kid from 2014 on and I didn't actually start getting, getting paid by Maxis until 2018 was my first year that I actually got a, got a, got a good deal from Maxis. And then 20, 
um, 19 or 2020, I got a great deal from Axis. So it's one of those things where I ran, I bought the tires for, for five years. I, I paid, you know, um, a pretty penny for the tires. Because you believed in it. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and I, I still believe in those things to this day. I mean, they, uh, they're amazing. They're an absolutely phenomenal product. And, you know, just don't, everybody's so focused on going after the product that their neighbor has, but that they're not worried about what, what they could find, you know, down the road, like, like, look for these companies outside, outside the market, you know, look, don't go to, you know, because the same 10 corporations get hit up all the time, you know, and, and if, if you're not reinventing the wheel, you're not going to move the needle, you know, like, that's the biggest thing, too, with becoming the Quatech general manager, is that, you know, a, a lot of these people, they, they want to tell me how fast they are, and, you know, and what I tell people, and they're like, Hunter, how do I, how do I make a better resume? I'm like, what do you do other than race and ATV, you know, race results are great, you know, social posts are great, that stuff is what moves the needle for us, but what else do you do, what makes you a good human being at the end of the day, what makes, what makes me want to be proud to be part of your program, sure, and, and that's the biggest thing that I think a lot of people forget, is that when you sign these contracts with these people, you're not just a representative on 13 weekends a year, you know, you're a representative, full time, 52 weekends Weekdays, out of the year, yeah. yeah, you know, and like, I mean, Man, you've seen it, Drew, when we're out in public and stuff, and people will come up and be like, yo, Hunter, what's going on? And, uh, you know, sometimes I know who they are, sometimes I don't. And, and that's the thing is, like, even if you don't think anybody's watching, you know, there is a phone somewhere that is taking a video, and the worst thing that could happen is you be in the background of a video, being, yeah. being an idiot. Not and, representing the brand. Yeah, you know, and I mean, I've, I've heard of people getting, you know, cease and desist letters, you know. I mean, Jeff Emick, look at him, dude, back in the day. Yeah. He, he had a full Cowie deal. that got Smoking the wacky tobacco. Got, got snipped, dude. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the big thing is, like, it takes ten years to build a rep, rep uh, takes ten years to build a reputation, and it takes ten seconds to ruin one. That's a good, uh, yeah. You know, and I mean, good it, mindset and, there. And it does, and I think that a lot of these little kids that think, oh, nobody's looking, not looking, you know, like nobody's gonna look and see, like I'm, I'm 11, 12 years old. But I mean, dude, like I, uh, I, I know that I look, you know, like I, I'm looking at those kids, seeing what kids are are doing it, and and I'm not saying for kids to to grow up and not not be kids, but like there's a difference between having good wholesome fun and just you know. Being a, being a wreck, you know. Yeah, and I've always gravitated towards those athletes that represent their their sport and their brand well. Yeah. Whether uh, it's multi uh, sponsors that they're representing, they are the brand that yeah. you, you're Hunter Hart H H. We we gotta you know cheer for you because you're sponsoring or you're sponsored by all these big names, Maxis Tires and Fly Racing. We and now Blue Crew. Uh, so you're representing all of those companies as your brand. Absolutely. And the other thing too is is you, you just got to be persistent with these guys. Like, uh, you and I were joking about it. You were asking me where, uh, where, where a specific helmet is, and uh, that helmet would be a Red Bull helmet. And, you know, it's no secret. I've, I've wanted to be, be a Red Bull kid forever. And, you know, I've... I've we been, all want to be one. Oh, I know. Yeah, everybody <laughs> does. And uh, I've just been fortunate enough to be right place, right time. And, you know, at this point, Drew, I'm, I'm getting free Red Bulls from, from, from Red Bull North America. And those guys, they've they've been hooking me up. You know, I'm in contacts with those guys. You know, once a month. You know, we're, we're recapping, we're talking. And I mean, that's that's been a four year build up for me. You know, that's been a four year process for me to, to get this close. And I mean, I'm not even. You know, I, I, my foot's barely in the door. You know, like I'm and, just getting I'm and, just getting a couple cases of Red Bull a month. And as know? far as I know, you're the only XC1 Pro ATV guy dealing with Red Bull. Correct. Yeah. Yep. yep. I uh, I am the closest one on an ATV other than Dustin Wimmer who had an actual deal back in 07. And uh, the funny thing is that the guy that I text with at Red Bull, he um, he sent me that photo one day. He goes, bro, is this you? And it was a photo <laughs> of Wimmer. And I was like, close, it could be. You're yeah. trying to help me out. Yeah. And, um, you know, but no, like, and that's the thing is like these guys, like they, they get hit up all the time. And, and how are you going to be different? You know, how are you going to help them sell an extra 100,000 Red Bull cans a year. Yeah. You know, I mean, because honestly, dude, like, that's what it comes down to is, is they don't want to, okay, you race ATVs, cool. What, what, how are you going to, if we give you $5,000, how are you going to sell $20,000 in Red Bulls for us? And for you, I think you've figured that out. You have a great social media presence, and you have to have that. Whether you're a professional or an amateur racer, that social media presence gets us the sponsorship. It does, and, and it's a it's a bummer that, you know, everything's gone to so social and, you know, like, oh, what what's your follow count? What's your impressions? What what'd you do last month? You know, but, I mean, you and I both know that that's what pays, and, you know, it's, it's helped to get my foot in the door with a lot of amazing companies, you know, one of those companies being Outback Steakhouses. I mean, I had I had a heck of an Outback Steakhouse deal for years, you know, like, not a lot of people know, but I ended up going to their headquarters in Tampa, sat at a roundtable discussion, kind of how you and I are sitting, dude, had a presentation, two-and-a-half-hour presentation with these guys 
about ATVs. Really? And Oh, yeah. Dude, I had a I had a card with my name on it. It was a gold card. I used to swipe it, dude. My buddies and I, they'd be like, yo, we going to dinner? I'd be like, yep, you guys just get the tip. And I mean, dude, I that's, just... Dude, that's baller. I'm, all, I'm excited because uh, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. My local pizza shop is giving me sponsorship for okay. next year. Free product. That's amazing. All, dude, all next season. I mean, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, yeah, right local there. Local pizza shop, yeah. buddy. Like, it's no Outback Steakhouse. Dude, but I mean, no, like, that's where you got to start with, you know, and like my, I remember like my first ever one, like I started with a pizza chain, like uh, the Papa John's in downtown Ithaca, dude, he used to do the same thing. Like yep. when I was like 14, 15, he threw me a couple bucks and uh, he was like, yo, if you ever want a pizza, just let me know. And you know, like I never really used it. Like, Right, I mean, we're not supposed to be eating that stuff. We're you know, supposed like, to be endurance races. Yeah, but I mean, I definitely got some calzones though, you yeah. know, and uh, calzones, a couple pizzas from him. But like, that's just a thing in... And a lot of these kids, dude, like, they get so discouraged. Like, I've, I've had a couple kids email me there, or uh, text me. They're like, Hunter, dude, like, I got shut down, dude, by, by my sponsor. I'm like, well, how many how many did you call? They're like, well, well, I called one. I'm like, okay. And they told you no. Big whoop. What, okay. So, dude, I call 100 of them. Like, I'll call 100 companies. Yeah. And, and you told me that in 2018. You might yeah. not remember this when uh, old Drew Campbell started uh, – hanging around looking for advice from young Hunter Hart. But one of the conversations... Like predator. Yeah, yeah. It's a terrible way to set that one up. But one of the remember, memories I have when I first met you, I did ask these questions. How do I get sponsors at an amateur level? And you told me just that. You, you can't just yeah. contact one guy and expect to have everything taken care of. No. You have to contact 100 companies and maybe they're 12 goggle companies, 12 yeah. tire companies, and hopefully one of them will return that email and offer you something. And I remember the I, I was with Fly uh, yep. a few years ago. They came back with a 25% offer, uh, 25% off, and I was blown away. I had never had that because the first year I had to pay for everything myself, and then the second year, well, I got a discount on my apparel. So that was great. And I've had some fortune where I've gotten you know full sponsorships now, but you have to work at the social media aspect of it. You have to contact more than just whoever you're interested in. So for apparel, I contacted Fly, FXR, Fox, Thor. I went through the whole list. Yeah. Moose. I went through all of them. FXR got back to me with the best deal. I've been sponsored with them for two years now. So definitely take Hunter's advice and try to hit up as many of them as you can. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, back to the, the Outback thing, because I can laugh about I can laugh about my own stupidity. Uh, the first time that I emailed them, I mean, my, e my, I, I didn't even email them. I slid in their DMs. I gotta, I gotta ask, so what made you think of emailing a food chain, like a restaurant chain? Dude, they were It's got nothing to do with hair scrambles. What do you mean? Where do you, what are you going to do? What's your first thought after a race? Well, for me, it was pizza. That's why I went to the local pizza shop and said, hey, can I get exactly. sponsorship next year? Okay, so that was your mindset. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go eat after I race. Yeah. Okay. I'm, what what are you gonna do before a race? You gonna eat a light dinner before a race? You gonna kind of skimp on food before a race? Are you gonna you try? Got and... me thinking. Maybe I should reach out to Jägermeister. You know exactly. I drink a lot of Jägermeister when you I'm done racing. Yeah, exactly. Like that, and that was just the thought process. I was like, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna calorie pile before the race, and I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna calorie pile after the sure. race. You know, and at the time I was like, how back is where it's at? And you know, I slid in their DMs, and I mean, the DM I sent them in twenty in like November of twenty eighteen was terrible i mean dude like i wish i could pull it up and read it to you guys but i mean i'll sum it up it basically said hi my name's hunter hart i'm number seven in the nation and i race atvs i really enjoy outback i hope you guys sponsor me <laughs> it's so generic that was my that was yeah. my dm to yeah. them in november of 2018 so I, and they bit no no oh they didn't, they didn't okay. even respond oh okay no so fast forward to 2020 they uh no excuse me the end of 2019 you know, fast forward, you, you know, a hunter that's, that's had some, some time to go around and, and get rejected. And, you know, this next time around, I was fortunate enough to have, I think I had 20, 21,000 followers at the time. And I DM'd them. I said, hey, guys, my name's Hunter Hart. I've got 21,000 followers. I'm making uh, 36,000 impressions a month. And I'd, I'd love to be part of your guys' brand. You know, we've got 20,000 people that go to these races, you know, and they're hungry. Like, they're blue-collar guys that they, they want to eat after a race. And they said, hey, Hunter, yeah, let's uh, – Tell us a little more about it, and we'll see if we've got an opening. So I told him some more. Didn't hear anything about a week. I ended up getting a DM back there. Like, hey, Hunter, yeah, we'd, we'd like you to come down to our office and talk. Or, are you local to the Tampa area? And I was like, yeah, I am. And they're like, all right, great. Here's your uh, meeting time. Please come uh, business casual and have a presentation for us, and, and we'll have a committee with us to, to look and see if it's something of our interest. And I get to their, uh, I get to their doors, you know, and shaking. I mean, I'm shaking like a leaf, dude. Like, I'm like... You gotta do a presentation. Yeah. Worldwide prestige. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, dude. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I'm going into this thing blind, 19 years old, 
And I'm like, I don't even know what, I don't even know where to start, dude. And I walk in. Yeah, there. I'm kind of curious what you gave for a presentation. Oh, I had a slideshow. I had a PowerPoint. Of I what? My computer. Race pictures. Yeah, dude. Snowshoe. I had the Howard's hole in there. I had a photo of Iron Man. Um, I had. Crowd- what, what else is up on the screen? Just a picture of you. I had crowd numbers. Well, I had a picture, and then I had like hardcore data facts because I was I was lucky enough to pull some strings and have some sure. hardcore numbers of like the the reach and the money brought into the community and stuff like that. And you know, so they sat there literally two and a half hours. They go hundred. We're going to be honest. We didn't even know this existed. Like, we had to Google this before you got here. You I mean go, GNCC Racing? GNCC Racing, they ATV had no Racing. Idea. They had no idea that wow. any of this exists. They had no idea that you raced ATVs. They, they had little to no idea that people raced motorcycles even. And, and that's what you a lot of... You brought that to the corporate's attention. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I brought it into Outback headquarters. And they... Uh, so, back up a little bit. As I was getting ready to go into the office, I was there and they are like, hey, we need you to turn around. I was like, oh, okay, sorry. They're like, no, you don't have to leave. We've just got some prototype stuff that's coming out of the elevator that nobody can see. I was like, oh, okay. So, I'm standing there. facing. It's a some... restaurant. No, no, no. This was corporate office. This was Six Stories, Bloomin' Brands, headquarters, North America. Okay. This is like six stories. Like, this is like the real I'm just, deal. I'm curious what these prototypes oh, are I don't know. out the it, door. Yeah, it was like new food items that they couldn't have shown yet. Cause, cause it's a barbecue sauce that dude, you weren't allowed li- to see. Literally. Well, because they own Carrabba's. They own uh, Outback. They own uh, now Aussie Grill. They sure. own, you know, five or six different large brands. Are these all owned by Blackstone? No, they're all owned by uh, Bloomin' Brands. Which is owned is, by... Is that owned by Blackstone? Oh, I don't know. I, didn't I feel like that, Blackstone owns deep. everything today. I didn't go that deep into it. We probably shouldn't in case our phones are listening. We shouldn't talk about this. You know, but uh, no, so they, uh, I ended up going up there and they had a plate of cheese fries for me when I got up there. They go, hey, are you Hunter? I go, yeah, I am. A plate of what? Cheese fries. Cheese fries, okay. Yeah, so they go, hey, we're going to have, we get here. They said they'd be a few minutes in the office. They're running a little late. Here, have these if you're hungry. If not, we don't care. Sure. I was like, okay. I'm like, sick. I ate these cheese fries in the lobby with my computer with a suit on, just (laughs) yum, 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 yum. And this was like your first big sponsorship deal. Yeah. About 10 minutes later, dude, these two people walk in, and a uh, super nice lady, I think her name was, was uh, oh, man, I forget what her name was. I want to say it was Leslie, and uh, she goes, hey, are you Hunter? And I go, yeah, I am. She goes, hey, how are you? I'm Leslie, this is my associate, and we're going to we're gonna basically, we're going to venture today, see, see what we think. So we go through the process, get this whole presentation done. They're like, awesome. Uh, we've got a new soft opening of restaurant next week. Come on out, and we'll see see how it goes there. And if it goes well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll contact you. So I go to the soft opening. I go to pay for the food, right? They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm paying. They're like, no, this is a soft opening. This is a pre- Nobody pays. Nobody pays. Right. I'm like, oh, okay. I got a goodie bag. I got a bag full of, like, custom, yeah. like, one-off stuff and had my name on everything. And, yeah, like, VIP list. Like, if you weren't on the list, you weren't getting in. And this old older gentleman comes up to me. He goes, hey. You look pretty young. Are are you media or what are you doing here? I go, yeah, I'm uh, I'm hoping to be an ambassador for for Outback. And he goes, really? And I go, yeah. And uh, he goes, okay. And he, I go, what? He goes, what's your name? I said, oh, my name's Hunter Hart. He goes, nice to meet you, Hunter. I go, what? What's your name, sir? And I, f- I forget the name of the guy at the time, but it was the CEO of Outback at the time. Oh no way! Guy. And uh, I go, what's your name? He goes, he tells me his name. I go, oh, that's awesome. What What do you do for the company? They he goes, ah, some call me the big steak. I go, yeah? He goes, yeah, otherwise known as the CEO. And at that point, I mean, dude, I... Shit, what do I, I say now? What I didn't do I know say what now? to say. Yeah. And he goes, so tell me a little bit about what, what you're doing here, dude. And yeah. I told him about racing. And he goes, racing? Like, like motorsports? I go, yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm a big fan of anything motorsports. He goes, I've, I've never heard of that, though. And they actually were supposed to come out to the GNCC in Palaka, and he ended up having a conflict of interest. He goes, ah, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'll see what, if I can move the needle for you, for you a little bit. Do they, do they sponsor other motorsports? They have an NASCAR team. Yeah. Okay. Or they have a car. Sometimes they have a car. I don't know if it's in the truck series or not. But And they're the title sponsor of this car? Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's got a big Outback on it, big Bloomin' Onion. But that's it, just NASCAR? Yeah. Okay. Yep. They've, and they do a little bit with football as well. And, but uh, nothing off-road? Nope, nothing off-road. And uh, so they ended up giving me a food card, actually. That had, it was a gold, like, Outback gift card. If you've ever seen, like, an Outback gift card, it's got, like, the... The says Outback. It's red. Most I don't have red. any friends. Nobody likes me in my okay. family, so I, they don't, I don't get gift cards. <laughs> you know, uh, but this one was gold, actually. Yep. It, was, it was a gold card. had my name on the bottom and a barcode. They said, hey, use it. Don't abuse it. You can't buy alcohol. You can't tip with it. Other than that, it's free to go. And uh, the, the, uh, the allotment they gave me was, was mathematically to where I could eat Outback every day for a, for a month, and it would never run out. Wow. To give you an idea. And I, and I never hit the limit on it. Wow. Like, I'd, I'd, have a, I'd have eight to ten buddies with me. You know, we'd go to Outback. We'd swipe. And that's what they wanted. I don't recall getting the invite. That's because the, you weren't cool. I wasn't there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, nice, and that's what nice, they wanted nice was, was they wanted me to be, you know, like, out there, like, like 
literally talking about the brand and what easier yeah. way to get people to go to Outback than eat at Outback than eat at Outback yeah. exactly yeah I mean the math they did on was they wanted me to be there like lunch and dinner you know like every day and I mean this dude was when I had twenty thousand followers you know I mean we do the math now I've got two hundred and fifty thousand followers you know on I mean? Insta on uh sixty sixty seven thousand on Insta and one hundred and ninety five on TikTok okay you know so I mean you do the math on that and I didn't even have TikTok at the time so I mean dude like man if you know and it's one of those things where Unfortunately, COVID killed the deal, so I only had a year, year and a half of the deal. So, hey, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, if, if somebody says, yeah, it's not possible, and that was actually one of the big big fights I had with my college professor on business and administration, is he told me that, that, that what I did with Outback doesn't happen in the business world. I said, you're a liar. He said, no. He said, that's, that's not how it happens. And I said, sir, I, I have proof. I have a card that says my name on it. I have emails from them. Like, I went to their headquarters. He's like, no, you didn't. And at that point, him and I parted ways on that. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of the, the beginning the end of my business administration degree in college was when, when he told me that, that what I had done at 19 wasn't real life. Yeah. And I said, okay, you can, you can pound rocks, dude. Your, yeah. your degree's a piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about how you got into that role of contacting all these people. Was mom doing it first? No. Or um, did you start doing it? So Was she encouraging you to do it? So, man, how did we, man, I forget who it was. Actually, no, it was our Fox rep. So our Fox gear rep back Through in the, the dealership. Through the dealership, yep. yep. Our uh, guy, man, what was, what was his name? I forget what his name was, but he was a super cool dude. He actually hooked me up. He was my first ever, like, true sponsor at, like, 11. I was getting full sets of free gear from head to toe. Wow. I'd get a helmet, boots, chest protector. You know how many 11-year-olds would love that today? Dude, and it was Fox. Like, yeah. it was Fox gear. Like, it was legit. Oh, I... I've always yeah. wanted Fox sponsorship. Yeah, I, and then towards the end, I was getting like five or six full sets, like boots, helmets, everything. That's huge. Towards the end, and, you know, it was it was awesome. And he honestly, he said, dude, the worst thing that you can do is not talk to them. He goes, you need for them to know when it's time, when they want to have somebody come and rep a product, they need to think of you. You need to be the first thought on their mind. And, you know, that's kind of one thing that I've always stuck to. And, you know, like when it came to like reaching outside of the sponsors and stuff, like, I was always, you know, like that was definitely one of my own wound things is I was like, man, like, like there's so many other cool things to do. And I've had a lot of awesome people that, uh, that own their own businesses that have been sponsors of mine over the years that have kind of said that to me. They're like, Hunter, dude, you've, you, you got to figure out ways to make money. Like at the end of the day, free products, awesome, but you can't dump unlimited amounts of candy bars in your gas tank. Right. You can't, your, the van doesn't run on gas tank right. on, uh, on, uh, or Red Bull bars. either. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't run on candy bars and, um. That was one thing that he told me is he's like, dude, you gotta gotta figure out a way to make salaries off of the stuff, and that's one of the big things too is, you know, you you never know what the deal is until you ask. What I mean, the worst thing that they're somebody's gonna say is no. You know? But that's the hardest part, especially as an amateur, is asking. And Why? as amateurs, we're trying to sell ourselves as an amateur. We don't have the credentials of being the that's, you know the most winningest youth rider in so the future history. Sell the future. Sell that we're gonna be the next big deal. Sell that. Sell the things that you're doing. I mean. As when I was an amateur dude, like I was like, you know, like, I mean, I'm, you know, you just have to, you have to sell the vision and a lot of companies that stay there for the vision, you know, like, I mean, man, spider, spider graphics, uh, 2015, they ended up giving me, giving me uh, a smoking good deal on some graphics. And, you know, I mean, I've run them ever since, you know, like I've never, I've never felt the need to leave because as I, as I progressed and got better, the deal also progressed and got better yeah. and they were there from the beginning, you know, and I mean, look how that's paid off for them. You know, I mean, you know, arguably, you know. I bet you I sell a ton of graphics a year. Sure, for them, yeah. You know, and you know, same thing with Maxis. Like Maxis, they were they were there from the beginning, you know, and they've and they've showed that they care, you know, and and a lot of time that's the big thing for me is like a sponsor showing that they that they're interested, you know, yeah. at the end of the day. And but you have to be the aggressor. Correct. These guys aren't going to no. come knocking on your. No. I feel like you're kind of taking the frat boy approach to it, where you're going to talk to ten girls at the party because one of them's definitely going to go home with you, right? Like it's not going out for the just the one you're interested in. You're going out for all of them. I mean, I definitely have, like, like the plan that I, I mean, I don't know, you know, like, back to the whole Red Bull thing, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for, you know, a different, different type of deal, you like, like, at the end of the day, like, that's, that's the, that's the brand you want that the I want. helmet. You know, like, that's the brand right I Right now, want. they're giving you free product. You want the helmet. Yeah, you Let's know? get that flagship helmet. But, but, I mean, man, like, I'll, I'm cool with it, you know, like, I'm super happy with the way that's progressing, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that's a slow burn, dude, you know, I can't let it consume my days, but also, at the end of the day, I'm not going to let it you know, not be something I, I focus on. And that's the other thing, too, is that a lot of the time it's your mindset. It's like you have to think of things in terms of what you want to be. You know, like some days, like when I'm shooting content and I'm stuffed, I'm like, 
man, like how, how would a Red Bull athlete shoot this content? You know, and that's that's how we come up with some of these videos. By know? the way, your last video was awesome. Uh, Rototill in your mom's garden. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, check out his TikTok or Instagram. That's right. Yeah. Great, great job we've destroying also, that garden. <laughs> we've also got a, a house donut video that's currently at two and a half million views. Yeah, that's You know, crazy. I mean, that's, and that's just this type of stuff, too, is like, I've never, I'd never seen that done before. And where'd know? you find this abandoned house? Oh, it's, it's in Florida. Yeah. It's in uh, Brooks. And how'd you get the keys? Uh, it was unlocked. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was unlocked. Is this your new house? <laughs> Uh, possibly, yeah. There's no furniture in it, dude. <laughs> yeah, there's no furniture. There's, there's just a moto track in the, in the living room now. <laughs> well, there was a couch. We had to move that. You had to move it for I the clip. clear it for the yeah. donut. Yep. I half uh, thought you were going to ride right into the pool. Dude, you should have seen the, like, the, so uh, we took it from another angle, right, that we didn't post, and it's because the front wheel, like, almost fell in. Like, it was really? on the edge. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah, it was good, dude. Like, that's, uh, you know, that's a new place, close to Kroom. Very excited. I mean, with, with the training I do on the side, too, like, that was one of the big things is, is my training in the, in the winter, you know, like a lot of times, like last year, I mean, I, I had somebody almost in Florida the entire time, you know, people coming in for a week, two weeks at a time for one-on-one -on -one training at the house. And all of my December is pretty well booked now, but January and February still have some openings. And, you know, that's kind of what, what pushed a little bit was, you know, the need for more space and being able to have, have the space and the facility to fully devote to that side of the training. Because I mean, the training stuff is, is a big part of, of my living and, and what helps me to you know, do this, and, and I love it, you know, like, that's one thing that I've always admired and, and enjoyed. So, if someone wants to train with you, you'll actually put them up at your house, too? Yeah, absolutely, yep, so, what it ends up breaking down to is once you, you know, for food, basically, so what's included is housing, food, and the training for the day, so, the way it works is, we will, you'll wake up one-on-one -on -one with, one-on-one, uh, -on -one or usually, the, it might be you and one other person, depending on the way the week's uh, scheduled out to, and, you know, you'll, we'll wake up about 7.30, you know, do, do our morning workout, we'll have breakfast, I'll make breakfast, we'll go to Kroom, we'll do our motos, and then after the motos, I'll spend, you know, X amount of time with you, you know, working on skills, stuff that you want to work on that day, we'll come home, do our other, other exercise and stuff, and then we'll just kind of have, have a talk about basically anything you want to know, and it's an open book, you know, like, you could ask me just about anything, I'll be like, yeah, this, this is how I do it, mm -hmm. and it breaks down to uh, 1500 bucks for the week, is what it comes down to, and that covers your housing, your food, and, and the training. So, I wonder what that is, is compared to uh, a dirt bike, motocross guy. Much train, cheaper. Training, yeah, yeah I'm sure. Much cheaper. Much, much cheaper. Yep. Yeah, that's a good deal if you're interested. Yeah. Uh, what do they got to do to... Uh, they can you? either DM me, uh, shoot me an email at hunterheartracing at gmail.com, and any of that, you know, and, and it's available too, you know, like, and, and, I, and I make it fun, dude. Like, we're, yeah. we're in Florida, like the mecca of motorsports, yeah. like, you know... Do a little gator wrestling, uh, I mean, airboat I rides... Airboat rides, yeah. I wouldn't touch the gators down no. there. You know, that's that's a big fine. That's a big fine and some jail time. Is it really? I oh yeah, I yeah. Have no idea. Ten thousand dollar fine for. But molesting. people are hunting them. I hear you can eat. Alex. Oh yeah, you can get it if you've got a ticket to shoot them. Yeah, but like if you and I just wanted to be like, oh, we're gonna go get ourselves a gator tonight. That's illegal. Oh, it's highly like ten thousand dollar fine and like five years in prison if you get caught. Really? Yeah. Same thing with manatees. Yep, molesting the alligators. Manatees, and manatees. I, I I've heard that, but the gators I thought were running uh, abundant, like they. Well, I mean, you overpopulation. Know. When we go jet skiing, yeah, you know, like, they uh, they do, they are on the river. You know, like, stand-up jet skis down the river, whew, you fall in, buddy, you're quick up. I mean, you see them on the bank and stuff. You don't really got to worry, though, right? The splashing or whatever is going to scare away a gator. Hopefully. You hope they go in the water, because if they don't, that means they're not scared of humans. Then you've got a problem. Oof. Yeah, the, the real problem is the uh, the water moccasins. The snakes. Yeah, snakes. They'll chase you. They don't, uh, like, they don't like the harmonics of the jet ski. Really? Yeah, so I was jet skiing one day, and I'm like, man, that's a weird-looking stick in the water. And then it turned, and it was swimming at me, so it was pissed off. Yeah, I freaking drilled that thing. I was I was not messing around. Jeez. Now, will you die if you get bit by one of those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got, well, I, th I think it's like an hour and a half to get to a hospital, or you're completely croaked. So I understand it's near Kroom, but why would you want to live in Florida if you got all these things nearby that could kill you? Dude, I mean, the river is amazing. Like, it's such an adrenaline rush. Yeah, you just don't want to be in the river, just on the river. Well, it's sick. I mean, you hit the water sometimes, but I mean, dude, it's so cool. Like, it's it's one of those adrenaline rushes. Like, I've never experienced a bigger adrenaline rush than like the first day I went jet skiing on this river, dude. I mean, like, the high was insane. And like, that was actually the day I ended up meeting Ronnie Renner, and him and I have become you know close friends after that. And uh, we've actually got a couple projects, uh, a couple video projects in the works. You know, fellow Maxis athlete right there as well. And uh, no, he's he lives close down there. And I mean, it's just cool, dude. Like. 
you know, I'm I'm just a fan. I'm a fan of motorsports, and Florida is very inviting to motorsports. You know, like yeah, I, I, some uh, backup for that yep, place. Yeah. I'm actually a volunteer at Groom. You know, I'm a certified Florida state volunteer. Really? Yep. Heavy equipment operator certified in the state of Florida as well. So what does this mean? Well, like if the like I can go out and groom groom trails at Groom and stuff like that. Okay. Um, you know, like volunteer. In your own equipment, or is there like no, a club that has no, equipment? No, state forest equipment. Really? Yeah. So I, I literally, when COVID happened, I uh, signed up, got myself volunteer set up, and uh, I'd literally be out in a bobcat skits here for 12 hours a day out in Kroom just grooming stuff, and they'd bring me lunch, and when I ran out of diesel, they'd come fill me up on the trail where I was at uh-huh. with the forest truck, and they'd just leave. Now, you're not being paid for this. No, nope, nope, not paid, but they did let me, you know, get certified so that, like, I can operate equipment inside the state park. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure you're out there grooming a track for yourself to train on. You know, honestly, I, uh, I groomed a little bit of everything, you know, like, you know, nice thing was the park was completely closed, so nobody was in the way. So I'm just yeah. out there just, brrr, just driving around all day. Why is it seasonal? No, so the, when COVID happened, they ended up shutting the park. I don't know why they shut an outdoor park down of motorsports. Yeah, because you get you get sand in your COVID. That's right. And the uh, But, yeah, they uh, they were super cool, and they, they, used, they let me come out, become a volunteer. And, and it was nice. You know, like, it was super cool. They let me do that. Um, you know, volunteer over on the mountain bike side and stuff like that. And it's just one of those things where, like, you know, I use I use the trails, you know, and it's one of those things where I enjoy I enjoy the motorsports side of stuff, and I also yeah. enjoy you know like being able to go out there and in the equipment and groom stuff back in. It's it's pretty fun. Yeah, that's not, I've always wanted to be a heavy equipment operator. Oh, we'll, I we'll, think I would enjoy it. We'll get you dialed in. Yeah, we got an excavator. I'll let you come dig a yeah. hole. I've I've played around with the Bobcat and stuff. Yeah, mess some shit up. I think that's what we need at the locals. Like I think if like why no bucked up and had like a skiddy their, their that, own piece of equipment that they own like a skiddy and yeah. they had like a tooth bar bucket on it and. A tooth bar, a rock hound, and like a brush hog, and yeah. they rented it out to like each promoter individually. Sure. You know, I mean that'd be that'd be killer. I mean, and if they rent it, I don't even. I mean, I know how much equipment rentals are. Like a dozer for a week's like five grand. So you yeah, know, but you, you almost need the trailer and the uh, delivery, so it's easier. You know. I mean, you could tow it with any F two fifty. Sure, but I'm saying if you if you brought it to the promoter, right. as part of the deal. Yeah, or if or if they had somebody that really knew how to run the equipment and built the tracks too, like so you get an operator with the equipment. Yeah, yeah. you know, like something like that, and it, you know, if it was like five grand, you know, and and I'm not saying like before the race, like to build the track, but like post race to groom the track back in, you know? Cause no, I mean, wait, wait, what? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. What what do you do after a race? Like if you groom the track back in. Uh- you what? Okay. Yeah. Like, well, because, I mean, that's always, like, the big gripe is that, like, they're like, oh, these tracks get so rough. They get so rough. <laughs> the big gripe. Yeah. The major. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, and, I mean, that, too, like, I do that at my house, and you've been to my house. Like, the amount of laps that have been turned there, like. You've pretty run it up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, I mean, I can go back in and fluff it, all, it, fluff it all back yeah. in, dude. And, I mean, if you did that, I mean, you couldn't, granted, you couldn't groom, like, a true side hill with, like, a like a skid steer. No, it doesn't work like but, that. But, I mean, you could groom, you know. 65 percent of the track you the know? breaking bumps are the big thing yeah yeah you know like the ass kickers yeah and i mean you could do that too and i mean i've always thought like man like that you know and i know it's it sounds like a lot of money to to do that but i mean at the end of the day the return on investment would be would be huge and two like you could also use it to say man like i want to touch this up put this in for next year you know like i mean how many promoters like i just saw the the next one what's punisher the, yeah that one i just saw that jared that, hit he was out there with his mini excavator, yep. you know, doing some stuff. Like, yep. I mean, right there. Perfect example. And that, I think we're seeing that from guys like Jared, guys like Mark Potter, because they race. Yeah. Jared doesn't race anymore, but he has raced. Now his kids race. And his wife. Yeah. Yes, and uh, Liz is still racing. So when you have those families that understand yeah. the dynamics of a racetrack and the spots that need addressing, like you said, after a oh, race, for sure. Jared's out there doing it because this is the first time. At, right. Uh, they've raced there before. Where is it? That I don't know, but I guess uh, Wynoa, when it still had the W, um, race there. I don't okay. know what the track was called. Was it um, Was it in Harpersville? Is that where it is? Uh, I'd have to check. Okay. I mean, it's not a not a huge, huge thing. But, yeah. I mean, I know that it was – I know I believe I know where it was. But, yeah, I mean, like, that's the big thing, too, is, dude, is, like, you know, just go back in and just groom that groom that stuff back in. And, I mean, you'd be, you'd be dialed. And – you know, you could always... It is Harpersville. Yeah. Yep. yep. So that's, I, I believe I got a big set of horns from there one time. Whatever that race was called. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know right where that was. I think it was like um, Roads Roundup. And I've been told that they're not really running the same track that was there. They've cut a lot of new lines and... I mean, if you could find a track a from stuff. five years ago, I'd be impressed. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you can't find a track from a year and a half ago, yeah. you know? And, and that's the big thing, too, is like... There's a lot of stuff like like that we enjoy about the fall series that you could bring you know bring into the the aspects of it too and you know I mean 
Um, man, the fall series, I just, I just enjoy that they're, they're a faster style tra- setup, you know, and I know that we are limited on properties in, in New York and, and that's completely okay. You know, I mean like that's, you know, that's what it is. Like the, the tracks that I've been to this year have been phenomenal. You know, Black Sky, they did a killer job. You know, the Tomahawk, they did a killer job and, uh, you know, Chuck Reed and, uh, Robin Johnson, you know, those guys absolutely kill it, you know? Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I grew up racing, you know, the series, and I, I remember back in the day, like, when we'd go to some of these gnarly places, and uh, it was it was funny, like, as a kid, you know, like, I remember when we used to go to Mexico for, for the race, you know, up in... Uh, North of Syracuse. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, it was at a motocross track. Super sandy up there. Thornwood? Maybe. I don't know. It was at a Mex- it was at a motocross track in Mexico. Okay. Yep. And uh, yeah, that place was crazy. Like I just remember we'd go there, dude. Like I remember we've gone to Pennsylvania for a couple rounds and just stuff like that. Like being able to have those cool different areas to go to and, and ride at is and a variety of terrain. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, like now I feel like you're pretty pretty similar on all the tracks. Like I don't think they you feel get much. the same. They have the same dirt, same rocks, yeah. roots. Yeah. Which that is what it is. You know. I mean, hey, it's it's better than you know ninety percent of the other series. You know, yeah. like I mean. I, uh, I've been very fortunate to go and see, see other series. And like when people have, you know, complaints or gripes about stuff, I'm like, go, go, go try something else. You know I mean? Cause like most of the gripes that you have about the series, you wouldn't have, you know? And I know you watch every single video I put out. Absolutely. I'm a fanatic. A couple, a couple of months ago, I did put out a comparison of your top 10 ATV cross country series in the country. Nio is number two. Nio is actually putting out very similar numbers to the amateur morning class of ATV racing for GNCC. So how were we how are we scaling this? Like what was our judging criteria? Great. Uh, uh, what I did was I took each race. Okay. And I took the afternoon ATV entries. Okay. So on average we had about 250 in okay. 2022. Then I went across all the other series if they had the scoring and uh, results on their websites and I could look up this information. I did the same thing. I took all their entries and I divided it by the amount of events they had. So let's say they had, um, you know, I took every round. Round one, they had 270. Round two, they had slightly less. I added those all up and then divided them, if there was 10 rounds in that series, divided it by 10. That gives you your overall average. Then I took this overall average and I compared it against all the other series. Nio was number two. For, for head count? For the amount of entries. Okay. For eight, and again, it's ATV adults. I didn't take the time to do peewees or dirt bikes no. or anything like that. I just wanted to do ATV afternoon adults. Okay. What's your average entry for these series? So I I enjoy just poking holes in, in things you do. That's just kind of my, my thing. Go, go ahead. Um, how how are you gonna how are you gonna use say the work series? Where did you rank the works? So excellent question. Works. I ranked as 10 because <laughs> they didn't have squat for the results. Tell them I, why. I could not actually get the the results from 2022 off of their website. So here's here's why. Here's why Drew had an issue with that, and here's why I'm going to poke holes in Drew's uh, ranking system. So Work Series, they take all of their racers, and the only people on the track with the pros are pros. So when, when I race Works, we have Pro and Pro-Am. Those are the only people on the track. At and the what, what was your average, 30 people out there? Uh, yeah, if that probably thirty five. Okay. Yeah, you know, so so that is that is the one the one thing that I'm going to poke holes at is that they they have a great series, but they don't have the say the quote unquote numbers to show it because they they do their racing so much differently. Right. You know, like like on certain weekends, it's just ATVs, like ATV Saturday and Sunday, and then motorcycles are the next weekend. And without even knowing that, uh, again, I. My computer in the back must have turned on Siri. Uh, without even knowing that, I I kind of put them at 10th because I didn't have the numbers to yep. properly list them where they belonged. The rest of the series, FTR and um, Mideast, those were all amateur okay. series. Fair yes, you have a double A front row where you would line up, but it's not called the pros. Correct. They just call it double A. So that was my comparison okay. amongst all the amateur ATV racing. Fair enough. Where do we put FTR and Mideast? Uh, I'd have to go back and check the. I can't believe you don't remember the video. Thought you watched it. Uh, I believe FTR was fourth. Were they? Okay. Yeah. That series has been growing. That series is a, yeah. is a sleeper. They averaged, I think, just under a hundred per round. Their turnout seems larger than that. Yeah. What was the other one? Iowa. Mm. And Iowa State hair scrambles. Yep. Yep. There's a well. OXCRs, IXCRs, Mideasts. Yeah. Um, fast track. Arkansas has one. 
Yep, Arkansas has one. But that Works. was real low. Yeah, Works has one. Um, you should really watch the video on Drew Campbell's YouTube channel. It's riveting. I, I seriously, I went. Th I spent. I, I don't know, like four or five hours one day going through everybody's websites, writing down all this information, doing the data. It makes the rest of us wonder what else you do during the day. Well, I try to come up with content to, <laughs> to promote ATV racing. Uh, well, I mean, I can tell you, we just just go do donuts in your house. Yeah. Done. I, think, I mean, we could fit a 4x4 four four through there. Yeah, I think the wife would have issue with that one, buddy. <laughs> uh, well, we got three rounds of GNCC left. I appreciate uh, you coming in and talking, and I want you to win the next three races, but before you leave, any big plans for uh, off season? Any big plans for next year? Any changes coming that you want to talk about or let us know about? Dude, we're systems ago. I mean, not much changes. You know, when you when you make the number one next year. When you're baking perfect chocolate chip cookies, you don't you don't change up the way you're I baking. I thought you were a cookies. watermelon man. I like me some chocolate chip cookies. Well, you're all about that watermelon. I traded actually chocolate chip cookies for a jersey at Snowshoe. Did you? Yeah, a dozen cookies. The kid was gonna bring me like some Chips Ahoy cookies. I said, uh uh. Homemade cookies. Kid brings me a bag, dozen chocolate chip cookies. I what, traded him a jersey for. What it. number is on that jersey? Uh, seven. Okay, that's the number on my autograph jersey too. Is a yeah. seven. Shocking. You must have a plethora <laughs> of sevens left over that you're just giving away. I got some sevens, twos, threes. Yeah, well, I want one of those number ones. I'm reserving. I'm going to reserve the the friendship number one jersey from Hunter Hart. Oh, okay. It's coming. I know it's coming. You know. We got to make it happen next year, buddy. You're not getting any younger. But I'm, I'm working on it. All right. But technically, in fitness wise, I'm only getting better because male Explain. male peak fitness is from like I think 25 to 29 for okay. endurance athletes. So that's why Bryson's doing so well. Well, I mean, if you look at all the champions, like that's the point at which they were the most dominant. When Walker had his runs, he was right in that age. Chris no. started winning when he was 27. Yeah. Look How old is Walker now? 31. Yeah. Yep. Are we gonna see him back next year? Do you know? Uh, we'll see him. In a couple weeks. He's going to come back for the, some of the later rounds? He was raced snowshoe. I didn't know he raced snowshoe. Yeah. I just saw him recently put out a riding video. He was doing yeah. some Oh, yeah, riding. he's doing the last three. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize he was back on the quad. and Look at this training. content creator. Look, I follow one one pro. You might know him, uh, Brandon Frazier. Mm. Frazier from Florida. You, 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 hey, you okay. sport quad guys aren't right. entertaining If me. you follow Brandon, what town does he live in? I know this because I have it on my phone, I think. Oh, look at that. Uh, or I don't, I don't have it off the top of my head. Avon Park. What's their uh, prime export? Golf carts, oranges. Oh, <laughs> I thought he meant the Frasers. Oh, <laughs> you're talking about the area what they export? Oranges. <laughs> Got it. Avon Park. Are you near him? No, nah, it's like two hours. Yeah, Florida's a big state. Yeah, you're nowhere near each the other. The Hancocks also live down there, and so do the Wilsons. Gotcha. They, they both race. Gotcha. Youth kids, rippers. All right. Well. uh... Any any big news for next year? Nah, dude. Nothing really. I mean, unless you have news that you know about me that I don't know. N no, I've got n news about me that I'm sprinkling. Uh, oh, let's hear it then. <clears throat> Break it. Drop it. Drop I, it live right here on the show. Well, look, uh, we're going to be airing Between the Trees here another half hour. We're filming this show on a Thursday evening. 6.30. Uh, we got time to kill. Yeah. Um, where are you taking me to dinner? Where are you, where are you paying for my dinner? Uh, you're the one with the Outback card. No, it doesn't work anymore. I told so, you. Yeah, it's no longer working. Uh, I, news for me, I don't know. You might not see Drew Campbell in the 4x4 class next year. Oh, thank goodness. Like you even watch us. You're retiring. Thank no, goodness. I did. Are you crazy? I'm addicted to racing. Oh, great. Dirt bikes. No. Do I want to kill myself? No. Oh, so you're in the market to buy one of my sport bikes. Uh, I, I, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't. No. I'll just go race with the 4x4 in another class. Mm. Oh, you're going to be one of those. I haven't figured out the class. And it's just a thought. There's Women a very good... That's what I was thinking. I was like, it's instead you know, of Drew, we'll call you Desiree. I, I can identify whatever I want. We'll call to you today. Desiree. Yep. Yep. There you go. I'll take it. Desiree Campbell. Yep. Still the same initials. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as I win. No, the uh, the actual reason that you haven't seen that is because the uh, the AMA actually made a rule that whatever gender you were born is the gender you race as. They do have that rule. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, it actually was an I issue. I like that. It was an issue when you're at Loretta's, I believe, is where the issue occurred. But there was an issue somewhere. Stop. Yep. That makes me so happy to hear because uh, I'm not a fan of this movement. I don't think that we should be um, playing unfair in sports. And I think that's exactly what happened with the this whole swimming competition. And most recently, there was some pageant where the person that won 
some beauty contest was actually biological male. I think that the world's gone crazy. Why the hell are we endorsing this? It's madness. So I'm glad to hear that the AMA at least has a rule. You need a hobby. I I didn't know any of this. I have a hobby. It's uh, video production. Mm. I play with, see the camera and lights. There is a lot of stuff in here. I did ask Drew that. I said, why is there so much equipment here, Drew, for your for your viewers? This isn't just for YouTube. I have a video business where I shoot commercial productions. I shoot theater productions. I shoot much larger productions than talking about <laughs> racing. <laughs> what type of movies? Did you know that my younger cousin is an actress? No. She, she was actually in the new Wrong Turn is it, films. That is dropped. her last name Hart? Mm -mm. Oh. No. She was in the, like, the Wrong Turn films. You ever watch those? No. Really? She's actually like on the actual movie theaters. Like, is this a name that people would know? I mean, not really. Oh. She's only 13. You're just bragging about her because you're related? It's like sorry. me telling people that I know you because we met one time. I'm sorry. My other cousins went to the Gymnastic Finals of America and ended up fifth. Oh. So if you want to go tit for tat, we can. So athleticism runs in the family. Is that what you're telling me? We try. We well. Try. We try. I, I blaze the path. My brother works for RIT and is a computer science major. Does he build laptops? He knows how to, yes. Can he build a rocket? Yes. He really? Has, and he has built rockets, yes. <laughs> That's sick. Uh, but to your point, uh, none of that wore off on me. <laughs> Just a dumb redneck riding a four-wheeler. Uh, Playing with your cameras all day. Yeah, and loving every minute of it. Uh, don't forget, you're coming back to do some co-hosting for Between the Trees. When? We went over this. I thought it was this time. No, it's late September. Late September? You put it in your calendar. I gave you two days uh, for options there. I could be busy. Well, I hope you can make it because you're putting up the money for the show. <laughs> I was going to just give you that money today. and just well, We can do that too if you want. I'll stash it away for a winner. But uh, Quad Tech has agreed to, courtesy of Hunter, uh, sponsor one of the Between the Tree shows. And I really hope you can come back to co-host that show with us. Oh, I probably can. you got to watch the 4x4 class go really slow, but all of the kids will want to hear you on Do we really like on recap the 4x4 guys? Yeah, I put it up on the TV and we... So I, what I do is I come home, I take everybody's footage, I have uh, five guys wearing two cameras, so it's ten cameras that I edit all together. I put the race clock up, I put try to put position of the rider, I graphics, logos, who's ever sponsoring, so if it's Quad Tech sponsoring their, their logos up on the screen the entire time. Um, and then we jump on microphone after it's been edited and we rewatch re it. And okay. we commentate like we were watching it live almost. Okay. I can't quite do a racer TV setup. But I how, try to make it entertaining. Per viewer, how much is this going to run me? So out of that hundred dollars I'm giving you, is that like a dollar a viewer, or how's it break? The down? return on your investment, yep. is going to be slim to none. Okay, I'm guessing that if you're actually on the show talking about quad tech seat covers, you might actually get one order. Okay. Yeah. Well, at, at that point, okay. which look, I don't expect a lot of return for uh, the investment that these sponsors are making. What it does do is it helps the race community because everybody who's won the giveaway so far mm -hmm. has been involved with racing. Nice. So the first winner was out of Oklahoma but raced a 4x4 and told me he was going to use it for his his quad to keep it going. Nice. The rest of the winners have been from Niowa. Why? You'll never get over that, the W. That's all right. You can say why not. Yep. I don't get hung up on that. But they've been from our series here in New York. Thank you. And uh, I'm happy about that. I'm racing New York series, so I love to see the giveaway. But I also have viewers from Canada. A lot of my viewers are in Canada. Dude, it's big up there. Yeah. Like, that's an untapped market, honestly. Like Those guys are avid. Like, I mean, you guys better be careful. I'll bring all my Canadians down here. Yeah. Well, if one of them wins, great. But we prefer to see it somebody... You know, stateside in new york um so yeah quad tech's gonna be throwing up 100 bucks hopefully hunter can come back for that episode right. of between the trees that'll be in september uh this was yeah this was an episode of hearty soup we haven't done one in a long time but it was a lot of fun nah, it's true fired me from the team i did not fire you, you harsh harsh negotiation <laughs> you quit for poor working environments something about because it was cold, dude. Yeah. I mean, this is my style podcast. I mean, not Inside. at the track with the wind blowing. Yeah. You know, we like... used to sit out in the sun on the side of the track, <laughs> dust going through. Yeah. Yeah. People We're... stop midway through, dude. We're like, moving yeah. up. Yeah. Someday I might have a real studio. We don't have to do it in my living room. I mean, honestly, I think we could just tape this off. I got tape in the van. Yeah. Let's make it legit. Spray paint. Put a big green screen back here. 
We'll just have images of Kroom, like we're sitting in the sand. Kroom. That's where you need to do a podcast from, sitting in the pit at Kroom. Yeah. You've never been to Kroom. You can't talk about no. Kroom. We'll make it. I know. I've gotten the invite down. For anybody that's wondering, the pit at Kroom is roughly 100 acres. No, I'd say probably 75 acres of sand whoops that are waist high. You know what they do to a 4x4? I've ridden a 4x4. That's where I decided not to race 4x4. The pit at Kroom is the reason why I am not on 4x4s currently. Yeah. Because it swallows those machines oh, a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, side swapping every which yeah, way. Yeah, and then it kills you when it lands on you. <laughs> it happens. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Dude, Thank you no guys problem. for watching. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe button. And do me a favor. Go follow this guy on his social media accounts. He doesn't have enough attention. We'll I see. like it. We'll see you guys at the race. Really help me out. Order a seat cover. That's all. <laughs> so I don't get fired from that job, too. <laughs> yeah. Buy some quad tech products. Anything. All right. We'll see you guys at the races. Later, guys.